What's up guys, Nahello back here with you, making a little guide for Guardian Druid. Now, I just want to say this up front. Now this is not the way to play bear. I'm not trying to say that like, this is the end all be all video of what you should and should not do. This is my personal play style, the way that I enjoy the game. It's a play style that I've honed over years. I started playing right around the beginning of Wrath, and I started playing Bear right around the time ICC came out. And then once we got into Cataclysm and then Vengeance became a thing, I started really getting into the aggressive uh, Bear play style. So I found that I really enjoy it. Obviously, there are going to be the people out there that say, oh, you're a tank, you don't need to do DPS. Your job is to just eat shit to the face. And personally, I disagree. I feel like the more productive you can be as far as the group that you're in, the more desire people will have to want to play with you and to invite you back. And obviously, for um, that enabling you to just push higher, harder content to get the the gear or the titles or the achievements that you want. So this is just a way that I've found to enjoy my Druid as much as I possibly can so I don't have to play a boring DPS. And one of my favorite things about tanking is that it's just a variety of uh, gameplay and just the fact that we're allowed to pursue certain builds to be able to do more damage, take more damage or whatever you're specifically trying to do I feel like druids have always been pretty versatile for that and I think that's a part of the reason why I've uh, this guy has been my main for so long and especially for Legion with the way that they've designed it and I mean I'm obviously older now um, have more things going on I'm married my career is going in a different direction so it's just like with my life the way it is now this is pretty much the only character that i play uh so as far as like how many artifact points that i've acquired just uh and the gear that i have it's because i any time that i'm playing this i i devote all of my time to this one character so it doesn't require you to be like a hardcore player to be able to excel in this uh, game, thankfully. So, without further ado, let's start getting into uh, Guardian Druid talk. So, as far as stats go, you can see up here right now, uh, 929 equipped. I pretty much stay with this uh, gear set for everything at, at the moment. The TOS 4 set is really nice. It was, uh, I'm honestly going to be really sad to lose this. Because just uh, playing with the Frenzied regen right now, it's really, really good. I'll go into more of like how to maximize your rage use for the four set. Two sets pretty self-explanatory. And working with the both of them in combination can be really, really fucking good. So stats. Me personally... I, I prioritize versatility and mastery. Not saying I try to keep them even. I had gotten to a point where I was at about 31, 32% versatility, but I had dropped down to maybe 8 or 9% mastery. And then once I started to do more 15s and started doing, especially heroic TOS, I don't do any of the mythic raids. So um, if you're looking for that, I don't really have any advice for you. I'm more about the dungeons, and I do heroic just for the tier, some gear pieces here and there. But for anything below the mythic raid, this is, uh, I found it to work really well. So, versatility and mastery about equal. Maybe prioritize versatility a little more, especially with trinkets like the Horn of Valor. An extremely good combination of reducing your damage taken, increases your frenzied regen healing, especially since that's not buffed from mastery anymore. I really like versatility for tanking. Mastery is good, but I consider it slightly secondary to versatility. And then behind that, I like haste, obviously, because it reduces the cooldown of your thrash, mangle, and frenzied regen abilities. Crit after that, and then Agility and stamina, I feel like they shouldn't really be on the stat priority list. As far as trinkets go, I have the 950 Feverish Carapace. Obviously, I'm going to take the agility on that because uh, the trinket's fucking awesome. And the armor, 
increases your armor by 4,000, and that is near half of the armor that I have being stationary. The damage proc is okay as far as like overall with the damage that it's does it's pretty minimal but it is increased by versatility thankfully so another bonus point for that now in regards to the stats armor health versatility mastery are your defensive stats obviously frenzied region and iron fur are more like survivability factors i would say and as far as like the way you're going to be burning rage you're either going to be using it to do more DPS with Maul, or you're going to be using it to defend yourself. Or, like you're going to see in a few of the clips that I'll show, for like big packs, for like big AoE pulls, you're pretty much just going to be using Iron Fur and Thrashing and Swiping. That's what I like to do. That's the balance that I've found that's really good. I, I'll use a Mangle in between here and there, just uh, if I feel like I'm going to need to buff a regen. That's pretty much the only time that I'll include a mangle in that AoE rotation is if I feel like I'm getting fucked up and I'm going to need it. That's almost like a cornerstone of playing a bear is anticipating what you're going to have to do. If you're going to need to survive, if you're going to need to heal, or if you just want to push out the damage to either get this boss down, get a specific mob down, whatever it may be. So, so now we're going to move on to talents. Most of the time I use brambles, occasionally I'll use blood frenzy if I feel like I'm going to specifically be taking a lot of damage depending on the dungeon or for like the first time I killed heroic, killed Jaden uh, bear, I was using this just to give me that little extra step up for survivability. But most of the time I pretty much stay with brambles as it is buffed by versatility and on the other side of that with the damage that it puts out while you're using bark skin. I pretty much always use that in line with my artifact with Rage of the Sleeper. They're both the same cooldown pretty much. Barkskin is a few seconds short of being on the same cooldown as Rage, but I'll pretty much always use them together, mainly to make sure that I'm going to survive while I'm trying to put out all of the damage, um, which is another reason why I like Incarnation, which we'll get to in a minute. Guttural Roars. I pretty much stay with this full time. Really good for Mythic 15s and above, obviously. The downside to that is incapacitating roar. It will aggro enemies that are not in combat. I've done that quite a few times <laughs> uh, where I pulled extra things with that. So if you're going to be using incapacitating roar while using this uh, talent, just be wary of like where you are, what's around you, how far away you are. I believe the range with this is anything within 30 yards. I don't know if the tooltip is adjusted for balance affinity. You know, Blizzard is, uh, as far as what's uh, in the tooltip and what's actually happening, occasionally doesn't line up. So you just gotta kinda get a feel for that and um, adjust for that yourself. So next row, balance affinity. Another talent that I pretty much use all the time. The only exception recently is when I did my first heroic kill Jaden kill in bear. I was also using restoration affinity just if I was needed to help out or just to help with the healing a bit. I just wanted to make sure that we were going to get it down. I was putting the rate above my DPS and what I want to do for that kill. So balance affinity is pretty much always going to be your best bet, especially for kiting for weeks like necrotic or raging or uh, bolstering it can be really, really good. Uh, for the next row, this week is Sanguine, so using Typhoon for most of it, with the exceptions of like Quarter Stars, I feel like Mighty Bash, it's a better choice with like the Scouts and the Charging Station mobs. This row is more of a personal choice. Bash I'll use most other weeks, but for Sanguine weeks you definitely want to stay with Typhoon most of the time, it's going to be the most useful and allow you to be free with your movement and what you want to do and to increase your uh, damage output. It can help to try to keep the mobs grouped together. For instance, the Pelters and Neltharian's Lair, how they're always hopping around, it's really fucking annoying. You can use Typhoon to kind of push them back together for yourself and the rest of the group. Now for the level 75 row, I was using Galactic Guardian for a long time. If you're having a little trouble surviving, you want to maybe have a little extra raids happening, Galactic Guardian is good. I used it during the Artifact Challenge, which it was extremely helpful for, especially to get through the first phase with Varus for the eyes that knock you off. But pretty much full time now, I'm using Incarnation, really, really good talent, and aligns with what I try to do when I'm doing big pulls. 
I'm using my rage pretty much only for survivability and on top of the fact that it does increase your armor by 15% which isn't huge but it is a noticeable difference. Soul of the Forest, eh. If you have the class ring, the Soul of the Archdruid, it is pretty good in combination with other things like for a single target, using the class ring and Luffa wrappings can be really good together for single target, but otherwise, uh, you're not really going to use it. Incarnation kind of dwarfs it for like overall usefulness, and that's it. So, down to the level 90 row, Guardian of a Loon. This is another row where this talent for sure, I stay with this 100% of the time. The next two rows actually, um, Guardian of a Loon, obviously so good. Increases iron for duration by two seconds or the healing of your next frenzied regen by 20% after you use Mangle. And especially with the gore procs to reset the cooldown on uh, Mangle, this can be really, really, really good. Not can be. This is really, really, really good. Kind of goes without saying. Now, with the amount of cooldowns that we have between Bark skin, survival instincts, we have the artifact. If you're using incarnation, that's another one. And survival of the fittest is good. Maybe even for like the artifact challenge, it is good. I personally shy away from it just because the versatility of Guardian of a Loon, it's always gonna be in your favor, whether you need to survive, whether you need to heal. Having a passive talent like that is really, really good. So then down to the bottom row, I stay with Rend and Tear, mainly because I'm using the Thrash Legs, uh, Eliza's Everlasting Encasement. Brings that percentage up to 10%. You're doing 10% more damage and you're taking 10% less uh, damage from everything that you can get five stacks Thrash on really really good for both ends um especially for weeks like necrotic where you really just want to reduce the amount of damage taken uh as much as possible this is uh it's a really 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 good talent lunar beam i've played with it here and there the healing is barely <laughs> like it it's a little over like 10 to 15 percent of my overall health pool i personally don't use it i've never really used it pulverize it seems to be the choice for people who don't have the thrash legs or i believe it can push ahead on single target um, I, I haven't played around with it too much as i said before i don't do too much like i'll raid heroics but as far as the mythic raids go i don't do that i, I don't have time for that I'd rather the time that I'm playing be as productive as possible with the minimal amount of time that I do have to play. Rend and Tear is pretty much overall the best and the most useful across everything, especially for like world quests, storyline content, gearing up and like heroic dungeons or just being able to just push through things at a good pace without worrying about an extra ability because we already have a lot to use. And as far as like the damage taken goes, it's not bad. If you have the legs, Rend and Tear is 1% better all the time if things are alive long enough to get the fifth stack of Thrash. So that is it for the talents. And lastly, we'll talk about the artifact. So as far as the rest of the traits, they're not bad. Some of them can be good. As far as the ones that we are able to buff with the relics, you want to stay with Thrash. 30% more damage from three Thrash relics is huge. And the last math that I saw on this was three Thrash relics are roughly equal to 40 item levels on your weapon. From what I've seen and compared to like when I hop into a raid and I'm playing with another bear, the bears that I've seen that don't have three Thrash relics or might have one, maybe two, the damage gap is just huge not to say threat gap is huge as well because it is but that shouldn't be a priority and there's always gonna be some haters out there saying oh well if you're pulling threat you need to relax and I'm like maybe you should you know not suck so thrash relics all day every day even if you've got to drop a 910 or a 915 down to like an 880 like it's worth it guys it's worth it especially once you get to a point where either you get luffo wrappings or the legs the three thrash relics are really really good especially when stacking that with the versatility especially once you start getting your concordance up there i'm at 10 right now which is a 6700 proc i'm almost to 11 
So, Thrash Relics, the Life One, Maw of Souls, Scenarius, and Emerald Nightmare, and Goroth, and Tome of Sargeras drops that. The Blood Relic, Mistress Sazine, and Tomb of Sargeras, the Arcway, are the places that are going to drop those. And for the Fire Relic, so that's going to be from Halls of Valor, Maiden of Vigilance, and Tomb of Sargeras. And I believe there are maybe one or two other sources, but as far as consistent places to farm, so that's it. Now for buffs. Agility Flask pretty much all the time. Mythic Raiders I know are using the Stamina Flask from time to time. But as far as like doing 15s or Heroic TOS, you definitely want to stay with the Agility Flask. Maximize your DPS output as Stamina. It's not bad, but the health that you get from the Stamina Flask is like a fraction of how much you can heal with frenzied regen if you're using it effectively the seed battered fish plate if you're not dropping the lavish suramar feast the seed battered fish plates that's what i use most of the time 375 versatility they're not too expensive to make going to nomi there aren't too many other cooking recipes to get with the mackerel i got it pretty quickly once i decided that i wanted to start making that for myself the bear tartar for food is what you should be using for the artifact challenge. I've told a lot of people this. I've got it in my artifact challenge guide. Even for weeks, for like necrotic weeks, the bear tartar can be really, really good. And then for a week like this week with the Grievous, I will use the fighter chow. Especially if I'm in a pug, if I've got a friend healing, like I flizzle or grape from my guild. I won't use this just because I can trust them. But for pugs, the fighter chow for Grievous is really, really good. Noting that when you are using the fighter chow, once combat drops, you should hop out of bear because the health that you'll regen, it's just going to take you longer to get that health back while you're staying in bear just because of the massive amount of health that you're probably going to have at a decent gear level. Like right now, I've got almost 9.4 mil health. It takes a while. <laughs> so I'll hop out of bear I'll even throw like a regrowth or two on myself just to make sure but that's it so next we're going to be going on to the rotation so this is one of the most straightforward specs in the game besides knowing what to use to keep yourself alive the rotation is a simple priority order it may change based on certain legendaries the main one just being soul of the arch druid which would put mangle at a priority above maul even if you're a rage cap just because the Ring with the Soul of the Forest talent, the mangle damage will be slightly above Maul by like 1 to 300k or so. But you're going to be thrashing off cooldown no matter what. Mangle off cooldown no matter what. Moonfire, you want to try to keep up. The damage from the dot itself is pretty minimal, so keep it up as much as you can, but don't prioritize it over getting out another thrash or getting out another mangle. And then if you are not using Soul of the Arch Druid, the class ring you are going to maul just to burn your rage you don't want to use it when you've got incarnation up though when you've got incarnation you should really only be doing that during ad phases or big trash pulls and the mythic plus 15s while you're using incarnation you are only burning your rage on iron fur because the global that you're gonna waste trying to use a maul the damage that you lose from the initial thrash hit itself plus the chance from the artifact with the positive outlook with that 15 percent chance for thrash to hit an additional time and positive outlook can also proc off of itself the most i've personally seen at least what i've noticed is i've gotten four in a row that's happened once maybe twice more often than not when i do get the procs you'll get two maybe three i've seen quite a bit of three it's always really nice to get that on the pull as as well as it looks pretty cool especially with the harambe you're just swinging around and just fucking everything up and wrecking the damage meters it's really really good so back to if you're not using iron fur you will be burning your rage on maul do not cap on rage the only time you will go over cap if you are close which you shouldn't be but if you do get to that rage cap point the only thing that overrides that is thrash thrash off cooldown absolutely no matter what and then Maul, whether you're off tanking, doing easy content, world quest, heroic, reg mythics, anything like a 10 or below. And that's it. So 
With the rotation, iron fur and frenzied region are abilities that require a little bit of patience and planning. It's pretty simple. Save rage for when you need a physical defensive buff or if you're out of regions for the moment. Also, if, if you have the four set, the iron furs or the mauls that you use will be reducing the cooldown on frenzied region as well. So just always keep that in mind once you hit that two and four sets. So also to note with the two set, it's very important to try not to wait frenzied regen if you're anywhere above like 70 to 80 percent health don't even waste it cooldown reduction that you get from the two set is so worth it and once you start to get that practice down you'll really really notice it personally there are the exceptions of if i'm sitting at three charges of regen occasionally i'll just throw one out either just to help the healer help keep myself topped off and to just keep that on cooldown also because i'm continuously turning rage don't feel bad if you use that third charge keep that on cooldown so the other thing with regen is a tip that Apparently not too many people know about. Using regen twice in a row, like if you're getting trucked, use that regen twice in a row. Learn the timing to where you're not overlapping it. As long as you're getting trucked and you keep that within the five seconds or the damage taken, it's worth it. You can top yourself off from 5% to full in less than five seconds. If you're using it efficiently, you can do that in about two seconds. There's an add-on that I have down below my character frame. It's called Frenzy Regen. Really, really good. Keeps track of how much you're going to be healing for. It also takes into account the buff from Guardian of a Loon for the extra 20%. So really, really, really good add-on. Definitely recommend throwing it on your UI. And finally to survival instincts. We already went over, I do use Barkskin and Rage of the Sleeper together pretty much all the time for the extra DPS and just to make sure that I'm going to stay alive while I'm trying to put out my damage. Survival instincts, I pretty much only use for cheesing mechanics now, like the shield from Herja, which once you pass like 920, 925 and you have at least like 8 mil, 9 mil health, you don't really need a cooldown for for that you don't want to risk it if you're not topped off but a bark skin will make sure it doesn't come near one-shotting you and then the frenzy regen after that will top you off 100% another example being heroic avatar I will stay in just to keep up my damage on him use a survival instincts when he does his big aoe and just keep bashing him in the face lastly to mention that bark skin and rage of the sleeper from our artifact are surprisingly strong cooldowns mainly because of the amount of armor and health that we have damage taken from that with in relation to the amount of health and armor bark skin is really fucking strong and obviously rage of the sleeper reduces all damage taken by 25 percent you're also reflecting that damage with the artifact trait you're doing 25 percent more damage so good so so good if you want to focus on maximizing anything it would be start with your artifact and when to use that best times the best bosses the best trash best way to maximize your gameplay as a bear is to anticipate what you're going to be having to deal with knowing what you're about about to walk into knowing if you should use incarnation compared to where you're about to be knowing what's coming next what's going to be the best for you and also what works well for how you personally like to play i like to play much more aggressively than a lot of people i like to push the dps not to the extent of always killing myself or killing my party it is a learning curve with that to learn how to push yourself as much as you can with that, how to maximize your healing with the frenzied regen, maximizing your cooldowns, survival instincts. The cooldown can seem long, but if you're using your cooldowns wisely and not burning all of your defensives at the same time, the only two cooldowns I will pretty much always use together is incarnation and raids of the sleeper especially on like the larger pools like halls of valor that first very large group before heimdall and then the second really big group after him really really good to use that all together and make sure you're staying topped off you're doing a fuck ton of damage you're healing from leech you've got more armor you're reflecting damage it's just <laughs> It's just ridiculous. So that's it for now, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. I was trying to keep this as short as I could.
could while still being helpful and just providing some tips into just how I play and trying to help some of y'all out there maximize how you're playing especially when trying to do the 15s and with the dungeons being buffed again now we'll be putting out a bunch of 10s as quickly as I can we'll see what I have time for but I'm really going to be trying to push the content and the videos and the guides for all of this new shit that we just got it's gonna be pretty awesome i hope it stays awesome one last note if you are thinking about playing bear if you haven't played one yet if you're gonna play one now is the time to do it as with quite a few other specs the end of the expansion is the best time to play a few classes just because of the scaling and the stats bears are one of these classes that you want to be playing at the end of the expansion especially if you want to tank my personal opinion it's one of the most versatile specs in the game demon hunters obviously not bad warriors have gotten better and better but if you're gonna play a bear now it's the time to do it before the new expansion comes out give it a shot try it out that's it so thank you all so much for watching thank you for your continued support with what i'm trying to do here i'm enjoying it it's been fun i'm enjoying the most is talking with y'all in the comments it's been really cool just seeing the community feedback that i've been getting up to this point i try to be as helpful as i can while trying not to come off as like an arrogant prick like i don't know everything as i said at the beginning of this this is not the guide for bear um this is just how i like to play it just happens to be really good most of the time there's still a learning curve especially with seat of the triumvirate my learning curve when a new raid or a new dungeon comes out can be pretty rough especially with like learning what i can live through what i can't in a fight like mistress and tome of sargeras the first time i did that on heroic i didn't realize i was going to be pretty much always tanking all the ads whether i had the boss or not and that was really rough to adjust to trying to like space apart my regens managing my cooldowns <laughs> when the raid first came out that was really rough being aware of that that like this play style the learning curve is steeper with newer content but once you get that down you can push through it and just fuck everything up it's a lot of fun i really enjoy it especially being a tank tanks providing just a variety of gameplay where you're having to make sure you got a threat you're trying to survive you're trying to do damage i like having a lot to do and i like doing a lot i'm gonna end this here thank y'all let me know what else you may want to see if you got any questions hit me up in the comments down below hit that subscribe button enjoy the patch day good luck with all your loot thrash relics especially and your procs with the crucible i love all of you guys thank you so much and i will see y'all again very soon